Hello and welcome to our usual live Friday webcast. My name is Creighton Jones, and joining me in the studio today are Jason Ross and, of course, Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. And today is August the 23rd, 2013. So we're going to get started right away with the questions. Um, our first question is an institutional question, which deals with the subject of Glass-Steagall. So our questioner asks, Mr. LaRouche, I would like to have your assessment of where the Glass-Steagall battle stands at this time. Congress returns to Washington in two weeks, and it is clear that Wall Street and the Obama economic team are in a state of panic over the growing support among the American people and within Congress for the breakup of the two big to fail banks. The fight has already reached the point that Wall Street is deploying in its own name through big bank lobbyists, the American Bankers Association, and other fronts in an effort to put out the fires that are burning all over the country and increasingly around the world. You are one of a growing chorus of economists who are convinced that the entire financial system is on the verge of a major explosion. It also appears that the Obama economics team is also scrambling to install Larry Summers as the next chairman of the Fed. This is diverting attention and creating yet another brawl with an enormous backlash building against the idea of the man who was pivotal in the takedown of Glass-Steagall being installed at the Fed. What do you see in the coming days and weeks as the shape of the battle? Well, first of all, you have to realize that what people are forecasting is probably not true, not because they are trying to deceive you, but because they don't know what's coming either. What, because the situation is such that the, uh, intrinsically the banking system of the United States and the transatlantic as well is now headed for a early crash. We can, uh, if you talk about timing by the end of this year, sometime in December or beginning of January, this whole thing is going to crash. And even those who are the big speculators, of Wall Street types, and, and in London as well, but I think the London crowd is sometimes much more intelligent on this question than the Wall Street types. But the point is, what is going to happen is the debt of the United States and the debt also of the nations of Europe, we're a very similar situation, they cannot survive. The whole system is going to crash. It is not going to be who's going to win. It's who's going to lose what. So that there is no, there is no option. So what they will do essentially is they will, are going to, you, with a bail-in as they call it, they're going to eliminate the assets that they can't cover for anymore. And this will mean that people will be starving to death throughout the United States, whole check, check, uh, sections will be starving to death. So there is no, there is no satisfactory solution to this in, in any way with the Wall Street crowd and London. There's nothing we can do with them. There's nothing we want to do with them. They're going to crash. The problem is people are saying, well, I'm going to survive. But they're kidding themselves. They're not going to survive. The number of people and, the, and their amount of, that will be saved out of this bailout process or the, the bail-in process will be very sm few people. And most of the people who are supporting the, this swindle will be partly swindled too. There are going to be very few survivors when this system comes down. So the problem, the problem of forecasting is simple. I can forecast. This thing in its present course of direction is going to crash. I expect it to crash during the course of the autumn months going into winter. And by the beginning of the year, you're going to see a crash beyond belief, unless we do something to change this. And that's where it stands. Most people are simply kidding themselves because of they wish to believe. Others are, uh, are just plain liars. But only a few people will actually come out of this thing alive. That's the intention. Remember, what's the motive behind this thing? 
don't just try to beg. What is the motive behind this thing? The British Queen has made it very clear huh, that her intention is to a prompt cut back in the population of the planet. Her intention is in an, by, to take uh, of the seven billion people who were recently living as living persons on this planet, going to be reduced to less than one billion people rapidly. So the point is, if, we are, if you're a patriot, your only option is to throw, destroy this oligarchical system. Uh, so therefore, you have to shut it down. Now, the, the question is, then, what's the shutdown? Well, there's only one op option we have. It's called Glass-Steagall. So first of all, we, we cancel this op all these debts that are fake. And now, now most of the inflation which you're experiencing in the United States and Europe is a result of an inflation, inflated value of worthless money. Now, there may be some small amount of that, all that debt that has some intrinsic value or could be claimed to have intrinsic value. Most of it is going to be, have to be wiped out. It, either it will be wiped out voluntarily or by law, or it will be wiped itself out because it cannot continue to survive because the money is all fake. What that would mean is we'd go to a new system. It's the same system that was, the nation was founded on. The first, the first Washington, George Washington administration. Same policy as, as I'm talking about now. Which means that you, you give credit. You don't, you, don't go, you don't put out money and tell people to buy the money and then spend the money. What you do is you say you give them credit. So that really you never are looking at money as such. You may use money as a way of deno denoting something, paper money, as a way of denoting an obligation. Who's got it? What's the score? So forth. But the actual the foundation of this is what are we producing and consuming? And what is the benefit of what we're consuming for us? We have to put the whole thing through bankruptcy reorganization. And we do that simply by Glass-Steagall. The Glass-Steagall law carried out in the same design that Franklin Roosevelt did it the first time around. And that's the first thing we do. Now we have, we, we have to go to now to increase the, the productivity of the labor force, which means we have to give not only more work, productive work, producing things that are needed, transportation, all kinds of things, but we must also increase the actual physical value in terms of production. More, more and better crops, more and better manufacturers, more and better services, more and more canals, railways, things of that sort. So this whole process is a cycling, a recycling of the process of productivity. And that's what we have to do. We've got, we've got to realize that all this debate that you get on now is based on a false assumption that this is a combat of that this we're going to take this money away from these guys. Well, it happens that the assets they're claiming to have as value have very little intrinsic value. What we're doing is we're paying inflation. We're paying for inflation without product. Our food supply has collapsed. It's been collapsed willfully under the two last administrations. The Bush administration was a killer. So it was the Obama administration that built a killer. So it's the destruction of the productive powers and resources of the United States under these presidents which is the big problem. The problem begins, again, with the cancellation of Glass-Steagall. It was the cancellation of Glass-Steagall that created the problem. If they'd stuck, if they'd stuck to Glass-Steagall, we wouldn't have this mess. So the, the problem is entirely a product of inflation turning into hyperinflation under the Bush presidency and under Obama. Bush and Obama have destroyed the U.S. economy, essentially. So the problem here is the problem of the public is the public doesn't understand this. 
because there are very few competent economists in the United States because they don't know what they're talking about. And we, we now got a generation, now if you look at the time that uh, this whole process started, when, the, when this was canceled, when the Glass-Steagall system was canceled, most people don't t today have lost track of what that used to be. They just don't understand it. And they, leave, they believe in fantasies. And that's what's killing us. And if we don't, uh, we have to do this, as I prescribe. We, there is no other option for the people of the United States in particular. None. They, they need Glass-Steagall, and without it, they, the people of the United States, will not make it. So this is a question of life and death. We install Glass-Steagall as life. You reject Glass-Steagall, Glass there's death. It's that simple. And all the arguments in between don't mean a damn thing.